The next student question I wanted to answer is about police brutality. And specifically, this student asks, why is police brutality not being adequately punished? Why are um, offenders not held accountable and have appropriate consequences for their actions? Uh, and I do want to say as a historian at this point in time that police brutality has not increased it is just now better documented. Because of the age of the cell phone and the internet and social media, it is now far easier for us to bring police brutality to light and to uh, bring evidence that cannot be ignored uh, and to hold people accountable. Now, you're going, okay, that's great, but we have instances where we have video, right? We have social media, we have attention, and still we don't have appropriate consequences uh, for the cops who commit uh, acts of brutality against citizens. And you're right. Part of the reason that police brutality, even when well documented as it is nowadays, uh, is hard to prosecute is that we have created a system whereby it is very difficult to uh, remove uh, law enforcement who are problematic. Um, one thing we have is qualified immunity, which gives a lot of leeway to law enforcement um, and basically gives them permission uh, to engage in more excessive things because of the uh, nature of the job and it makes it very difficult uh, for them to be held accountable for their actions in a civil court, even if they are uh, exonerated by the official procedures. Um, there's also uh, a cultural element uh, in a lot of law enforcement. There's a reluctance for uh, police officers to speak out against another officer, um, which is often uh, necessary in certain internal investigations. There's a um, so in some departments, there's a very much us versus them kind of cultural uh, mentality. Uh, again, I'm not saying this is all law enforcement, but there definitely is this kind of notion that um, we've, we've gone from, you know, helping civilians to looking for uh, perpetrators. So this surveillance state that we've, we've created is kind of uh, made police more antagonistic towards uh, the folks and the communities that they serve. And that also kind of creates a little bit of a difficulty in getting uh, law enforcement to hold their own members accountable. We also have very powerful unions uh, in public service, including in police, that uh, mandate that the procedures and the processes for removing someone um, usually takes a lot of time uh, usually takes a very high bar of evidence uh, and then even if someone is found guilty of wrongdoing there is no national database or registry uh, for uh, law enforcement officials who have committed excessive uh, use of force or brutality and so it's very easy for them to go to a completely different jurisdiction and uh, get a job because there's really no way of thoroughly checking unless that hiring department is doing above and beyond their due diligence by law and checking into their background. So how can we fix this? Uh, for one, continue to highlight injustice where you see it. There is a lot of power in uh, social media in speaking out uh, in um, protest of law enforcement uh, who commit police brutality. We, we saw that in Minneapolis with the fairly quick firing and uh, arrest of the officers who killed George Floyd. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't happen everywhere. Breonna Taylor's uh, killers. Breonna Taylor was a young woman in Louisville, Kentucky, an EMT who was shot and killed in her sleep when uh, officers were serving a uh, no-knock warrant. In other words, they just bust into her apartment. And those officials still have not been punished um, at all. There's one that's on the verge of being fired, but still no arrests have been made in her death. Um, so the system is still very slow moving. 
but the more that we apply pressure on it and the more that we question the way the system is, for example, do we really need qualified immunity? Um, do we really not have uh, a way to uh, keep folks who have gone through the process and been proven to be excessive use of force? Why don't we have uh, a way to track them and prevent them uh, from getting other jobs in other places? Those are the kinds of things that we can focus on changing concretely and again, vote, 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 because even in your local elections, you have the power to change the culture. Positions like sheriff, for example, are very frequently ones that are elected. So you have the power as a voter to help try to change the system and call your congressman because trying to address police brutality is something that is currently up for debate in Congress. And none of the drafts as of the recording of this video on June 20th say anything about federal law enforcement. And in El Paso, that means Border Patrol and ICE, not included in any of these reform movements. So call your Congress people, vote in your local elections, continue to push on social media for change and accountability.